Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld, and this is a digital rebar training video for lab 1015, which is about using the pooling broker. To use the pooling broker, the first thing we need to do is to create a pool of machines. So we're going to create a pool. We're going to call this one lab 1015. And we will define a release action. This is the action that will get called when we uh, release machines from the pool. So from uh, in use back to active, we can also define entering and exiting and allocation mechanisms for this demo. We just need release and we're going to give it a icon. Uh, the user icon is ideal here. Any icon that has an outline. So you can test that by saying user outline and that it has a matching outline uh, icon is a good one for the pools because the graphics around the pool use the uh, fact that it has an outline as part of the display process. I'll show you that when we're looking at the machines view. So you'll see here we've got our load generator, we've got our icon set, we've got our pool. Now we actually need to put some machines into the pool to use. You'll notice right now that I don't have any machines, I just have my one base. So we need to create a cluster of machines. We're going to call this one lab 1015. And we're not ready to use the pool broker because we don't have a pool. We're going to use the context broker here. And we will put 10 machines in this pool. And let's give it a distinctive color and distinctive icon. That should get us going. And now what you'll see us running through here is actually building up the machines for this uh, this lab and you'll they'll all be called lab 1015 it should be pretty easy to see them there we go they're coming in we're going to let them run through the process because before we go any further we need to create this lab 1015 broker i have one left over from my rehearsal i'm going to remove that it's locked of course unlock it and then remove it excellent so now we can go ahead and add in the, a new pool broker where it's possible to have multiple pool brokers. You'd want to do that. If you have different pools that you want to draw from, we are going to call this one instead of pool broker, which is a built in name, the lab 1015 broker. And we don't want to use the default pool. Instead, we're going to use our new lab uh, 1015 pool and give it an interesting icon. We can give it the same, the user, icon here that looks great all right so now we actually have a broker that will allocate machines from that lab 1015 pool we have some machines but they are not yet in that pool this is the pool column and you'll notice all of these are default so i need to select all of these uh, new machines i just created and add them into that uh, pool so down here actions pools insert you insert things into a pool and then you allocate and release them once they're in the pool. Here's our lab 1015. We commit that action and you will see the system is changing over. It's very clear that we have now put those machines into that pool. If we had assigned an add action, it would be running that workflow now. So we actually have the ability to control when machines are added, removed, allocated and released setting the workflow that gets run for them. It's incredibly handy. That way, when you move machines around in the system, we actually get the benefit of having them um, correctly allocated for the system. So now you'll see we've got uh, this cluster. It is in pools. Now all we have to do is start pulling machines out of that pool. And we're going to do exactly that using the new pool broker we just created. I'm going to call this the square cluster just to differentiate it from the one we have. And here we want to use our new lab 1015 broker. That's going to pull machines in and out. I'm going to go ahead and allocate five machines here and give it a distinctive color. And we will call this one the icon square. So we can easily distinguish it from other machines. And as we go through here, Jumping in on the activity tab, what you'll notice is we're just going through a normal cluster allocation. Once we hit that allocation, instead of creating a machine like we would do with the context or Terraform brokers, we're going to the pool broker, which is reserving them from the system. It's very fast here. And what you'll see if we jump over to the machines 
is now we have these machines. They're picked at random out of the pool, running the pipeline that we had asked to start, and they are now in that square cluster. Uh, the other thing you'll see here is that they are uh, building in lab 1015. The icons here, I must have picked something wrong. If it had an outline, it would have switched it uh, and do it. But you'll notice the pool icons turn green, indicating that they are now in use. So now what we have is a pool of machines, half of which are in use because they are now allocated to a cluster. If I came over and created a second cluster, circle, spelled correctly, it's always helpful, and chose that same broker, picked five machines here, pick a different color, excellent, and create this system. Jumping over to the machines view, you're going to notice this same, once it hits the uh, broker, you'll notice the exact same behavior. We're getting now machines allocated here out of the same, uh, out of that pool. The pool is now actually a capacity. We have a view for this that uh, you can easily watch. So here is our lab. Um, sorry, these are the clusters. Here's the pool. So here's our pool. We see it's 0% available, five are in use, five are in transition. Um, so we actually know the system is going. Hold is used if there's an error. Uh, then the machines are marked as not either in use and you can have an operator go check them out. We have whole videos dedicated to how pools work. I'd suggest you check them out. Purpose of this is just to give you the very basics on how the systems are going to work so that you can uh, replicate and play with this function yourself. So now I've gotten the basics. I've, I've created a pool of machines. I've now created two clusters that are pulling from that pool. If I went into Square and decided I need more resources than it has, uh, and applied that. I'm going to go and apply it from here. What you'll notice is that we're going to get a failure saying the system was not able to allocate. If I check that work order out, you're going to get a very clear message. Um, let's see. You can see all the diffs. You can say we aren't changing these machines, and then we couldn't get any enough machines to fill in the pool. In this case, that's that's not a surprise. We knew we were over allocating. But what you should see very clearly is the system, um, the cluster was not able to finish that work. If we come back into circle and drop it down to say two machines, allow it to run. Excellent. We're going to jump over here in machines. What you'll see here is that the machines are going back. This is load generator. They're going back through their allocation time. The cluster uh, would have been immediately, those machines would have been immediately removed. So the machines, as soon as they hit release, are no longer in the cluster. Um, and now they're being cleaned up and put back into service, if you want to think of it that way, that's the way I, I think of it, so that they can be available for the pool again. They're not actually available for the pool until they complete that workflow. So they go from being in use to being uh, released and then being available or free again. So now if I go back to Square and you can see where we weren't able to complete that, but now we try again. Now we're going back through the pool has enough resources, should have had enough resources. It's probably not done yet. Try again. And assuming those machines are done, we'll be able to run through and get the allocations. Am I asking for more machines than I have? I must be. Uh, looks like it. I need to release one more machine. So let's do that. Goes down to one. Release it. See what's going on over here. Okay, now we have one slot available. We can go in back to square. We're asking for eight machines. That's, uh, oh, we, I thought we were asking for eight. I mis mistyped. Go over here, leave it at eight, apply, and happily go through the process in getting the system. That looks great. And so now we should have that last machine um, coming up. Okay. So one of the things that this lab encourages you to do is play around with some of these allocations so that you can actually see how the different systems interact um, and what that's, what that's going to look like from a uh, 
interaction perspective. Because part of what I want you to see here is actually the concepts behind using the pools and being able to allocate and deallocate systems, have resource contention, and, and what's going to happen. So it's actually a very exciting concept to be to be able to come back and realize that you can take a, a cluster, drop it down to a few number of resources, and then have those resources uh, reset and reallocated back into the pool and get cleaned up. So if you were releasing things from one cluster, you can actually scrub the disks, reset it, rebuild the OS, get everything ready for the next allocation, and then have that new allocation happen very quickly um, and start right back up. Incredibly powerful thing for bare metal, but could be easily applied for any times where you have a high cost of checking a machine out or prepping it or getting it ready, like in um, a CI CD system where you're doing a lot of install and setup or transferring a lot of assets to a machine. You don't want to rebuild that every time, you just want to be able to check it out of the pool, use it for the task, and then recover it very quickly. This allows you to do exactly that use case. So now if we come back in here, we have this lab 1015, it has machines checked out. If I went through and made the uh, accidental choice of deleting this machine, remember this, we actually have uh, systems that are in use in this cluster. What you'll find is the system has a check for that and tells us we can't destroy machines. We can see that they're in use here. And so we can go back through and take those two clusters, delete these clusters, normal operation here, and when we do that, coming back over here, the machines aren't actually deleted when the cluster is deleted, they're just released back into the pool. So we get this cleanup operation, we can see exactly what's going on. If we check our overview here, what you'll see is a whole bunch of machines are busy, um, but our pool counts are transitioning back over and now they're all done. If we come back to this cluster and look at what happened here, now we can just set this to runnable no machines are allocated and we're, we're able to de destroy them. So at this point we've now cleaned up um, everything from this cluster. still have my resource broker and pool around. There's no reason to remove those. Um, from a cleanup perspective I'm not using any resources for it. Uh, once again this is lab 1015. I really encourage you to play with this. It's a lot of fun to use the pooling capabilities in Digital Rebar, amazingly powerful capability. Um, you can also, of course, uh, take actions for pools uh, right from the UX. There is the ability to do uh, those operations without having to go through clusters, but the cluster uh, concept here is incredibly powerful because of the ability to reuse a shared resource. Uh, if this is interesting, please check out Lab uh, 1020. Uh, which should be the Terraform multi-cluster lab, which actually does cloud resource uh, automation. I know you'll enjoy that lab too. Thanks.